Allah the Exalted in the Quran dispraised a category of people who have a certain quality in them describing him saying ذرهم يأكلوا ويتمتعوا ويلههم الأمل فسوف يعلمون let them eat and enjoy themselves and be diverted by false hopes for they will come to know Allah is dispraising people whose wishful thinking and false hopes diverts them or divert them from being mindful and heedful of the hereafter and they continue to be so until they are struck with the reality of death which Allah described as a disaster in the Quran فَأَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةُ الْمَوْتِ You were struck with the disaster of death When this happens, they wish they can come back to make up for what they left behind or were negligent about. As Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتِ Until when death comes to one of them, he will say, Oh my Lord, bring me back so that I might do righteousness in that which I have left behind. Make up for what I neglected. False hopes to live long is nothing but an illusion, nothing but a deception, nothing but a mirage. A person feels that it is something, forgets the reality until he's struck with it, and he continues to be deceived. كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيعَةٍ يَحْسَبُهُ الظَّمْآنُ مَا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ لَمْ يَجِدْهُ شَيْءٍ like a mirage in a lowland until when one reaches it finds it to be nothing this is the deception of having false hopes to live long and because of this illusion and mirage that we all live in Varying in level, one becomes more concerned and works much harder for this life to obtain more, collect more, enjoy more. I want more of this and that and this and that. Nothing suffices the son of Adam with regards to this dunya. And he becomes more heedless and heedless of the hereafter. And this disease is very dangerous because it grows stronger if one is not careful and heedful of it and protects and guards his heart against it to the point that some people take it way beyond their lifespan as the Prophet ﷺ said. And this is reported by Imam al-Bukhari. Ibn Mas'ud said, one day the Prophet ﷺ, and I want you to visualize this. He said, one day the Prophet ﷺ drew a square. And in the middle of that square, he drew a line going up, went beyond that top side of the square. Then he said, هذا, and pointed to the line going up. 
This is false hopes that the son of Adam has to live longer. Wahada and this, the square, ajalu, death. It encompasses the, the person from all directions. It is going to happen. No escape. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, the person or the son of Adam continues on this, meaning on this line of having false hopes to live longer. And he continues living like this in this deception until he is struck with that line. The line of death. And it grows. And it grows. And it doesn't go any weaker, rather stronger. As the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, the heart of an old person continues to be young in two respects. His love to this life and false hopes to live long. He continues to be deceived and increased and increased and increased until again that reality of death strikes him. He continues to be so and forgets the promise of Allah, which will certainly happen. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. And then the description of what matters. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Wa inna ma tuwaffawna ujurakum yawm al-qiyamah. Faman zuhziha anin nari. Wa udikhil al-jannah. Faqad faas. Each soul shall taste death. Because death has a taste and it is bitter except for those whom Allah Azza wa Jal bestows His mercy upon. And you will be given your recompense on the day of judgment. So he who is removed from the fire of hell and is admitted into Jannah has indeed attained success. Al-Hafid ibn Hajar, rahmatullahi alayhi, said this is a great principle establishing that one should not live in this life thinking that it is his eternal abode. The Prophet ﷺ cultivated his companions on this principle. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Umar, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, said, one day the Prophet ﷺ took me by my shoulder and said the following, be in this life, live in this life as if you're a stranger or a wayfarer. When you're a stranger in a place, you don't establish yourself in it. You don't live there as if you're going to live forever. You're a stranger, you're a passage. Imagine someone going from one place to another and he has a transit in, in one city or one country. And then he decides to get a visa, go into that country, buy a house, buy a car, buy furniture. And then when the time of his flight comes, he leaves everything behind and goes on the flight and reaches his destination. Well, this is the similitude of life. We're in a transit period. It's an interim stage. Soon the flight is going to depart and we must get on board. There is no escape. We will get on board because that iron grip of death will not leave anyone. That's why Ibn Umar understood this. 
and he used to tell people to instruct people because he was one of the scholars of the companions radiyallahu anhum ajma'in he used to say if you live to the morning don't expect yourself to live as long as reaching the night and if you reach the night don't expect yourself to live until the morning Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As and this is reported by Imam Ahmed and classified as authentic by Al-Albani he said the Prophet وسلم, one day passed by us and a part of our house had worn out so we were fixing it so he وسلم, asked what are you doing we said well it wore out and we're just fixing it he said I believe the matter is much sooner than you doing this meaning death is much closer to you than the time you're spending repairing this house again instilling this principle that this life will fat will pass very fast suddenly can take anyone by the grip of that death by the angel of death by kun fayakun Salman radiallahu anhu on his bed death started weeping and this is also reported by Ahmed classified as sound by Al Albani so people around him started to ask him why are you weeping one of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa not just anyone why are you weeping he said because the Prophet وسلم, advised us with something. He gave us an advice, but we did not act upon it. We abandoned that advice. They said, what was it? He said, he advised us to live and have enough provisions just like a person who's traveling will carry with him on his journey so people looked around and assessed what he possessed in his house to find it something does not go beyond that does not go beyond 20 to 30 some coins of silver and yet he considered this to be way too much for the advice given to them by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. In the book of Imam Al-Bukhari radiallahu anhu wa rahimahullah, Ali ibn Abi Talib said to people one day, when he was admonishing them. He said, the two things I fear the most for you are following desires and false hopes to live long. For following desires prevent a person from adhering to the truth. While having false hopes to live long makes a person heedless of the hereafter and then he said life is departing and akhira is approaching and each each one of these two has its own people so be of the people who work for the hereafter and don't be of the people who work for this life. Today, in this life, you work and you're not held accountable here. But tomorrow, in the hereafter, we will be held accountable and will not be able to perform any deed. Having false hopes is indeed destructive 
as the Prophet ﷺ said, as reported by Imam Ahmad, classified as sound by Al Albani, he وسلم, said, Halaku hadhi al ummah, Halaku ha, the destruction of this nation at the end of time will result of two, from two things love of this life and false hopes to live long. I apologize. It is stinginess and false hopes to live long. Being stingy and having false hopes to live long are causes of destruction at the end of time. False hopes make you heedless of the hereafter and thus you focus on nothing but this life. Which means you will continuously postpone repentance whenever you sin. One's heart becomes hard because a soft heart results from remembering death in the hereafter and Jannah and Nar. The consequence of having hard hearts is having dry eyes. You will never be able to shed a tear. Regardless of how many admonishments, how much recitation of the Quran you hear or you do. When one's heart is not attached to the Akhirah, when it's only attached to this dunya, it will become very difficult to react to admonishments and to the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, and it becomes very difficult to shed a tear. We're still alive. And this is a blessing because the opportunity is still there. We still have a chance. We haven't departed yet. We're not struck with that disaster of death yet. And therefore, let us take advantage of this opportunity before we lose it. We are in the middle or in the beginning or the first third rather or half of the month of Sha'ban, which is an introduction to the blessed month of Ramadan. It's a preparation month for the month of Ramadan. Let's take advantage of this preparation stage. So when, when Ramadan comes, we're ready. Our hearts are ready, are prepared. The Prophet said, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, said, take advantage of five things before other five things happen. One of which is, take advantage of life before death. So let us take advantage of life before it's too late. Allahumma inna nas'aluka husna al-khitam. اللهم إنا نسألك حسن الختام اللهم إنا نسألك حسن الختام اللهم لا تمتنا إلا على طاعة اللهم لا تمتنا إلا على طاعة اللهم لا تمتنا إلا على طاعة